I want to talk to you about your soul. So maybe you know from a biblical perspective what your soul is, but most people only have a cultural perspective. When you say the word soul, they think soul food, soul music, soul train, if you're old, soul train. But from a biblical perspective, you understand the importance of your soul. So we know that your spirit is born of God. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. And he that's joined to the Lord is one spirit. So your spirit is that, that, that link to God, that connection with God. You're made in the likeness and image of God. God is spirit. So your spirit connects with God's spirit. That's where you're born again. That's where you hear the Holy Spirit. That's where you're led by the Spirit. Okay, that's important. We got that. You get filled with the Holy Spirit. You pray with the Spirit. Those are your spiritual forces. But your soul is that human part. It's mind It's emotions, it's will. That human side of you has to grow, has to be renewed, has to learn, has to get strong, or you won't have what it takes to follow your spirit. That's why the Bible said if you're spiritually minded, you'll be blessed. But if you're fleshly minded, you'll die. Some people say, I don't care what's going on in my soul. I'm a spiritual person. That's not a good position to be in. It means you don't understand. All right? Look in Genesis 2, verse 7. Here's a good scripture for you. Genesis 2, the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground. There's your body. Okay? He formed your body out of the dust. That's why we say, ooh, that's dirty, because you were formed out of the dust. You all a little slow here in the second service or what? <clears throat> and then and then he breathed he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life there's your spirit god breathed and that's why every human is valuable cuz that conception that spark that breath of god is in the human he didn't breathe into the animals he didn't breathe into the plants he breathed into humanity and man became a living soul The old King James, a living soul. New King James said a living being. There's your soul. So body, spirit, soul. So your spirit is born, breathed from God. But your soul, that's the human side. Mind, emotions, and will. And actually, until you get mature, your soul runs your life. When your spirit is not connected to God, you still have a spirit, but you're spiritually dead. You're not connected to God. That's why Jesus said you have to get born again. Then your spirit comes alive, and you can begin to be spirit-led. But even then, your soul can take over. And your spirit says, hey, let's get into that alive conference. We're going to worship. We're going to pray. We're going to seek the Lord. And your soul says, I don't feel like it. So, so which one won that battle? So that's the struggle where humanity is in so many areas, marriages, finances, future, vision. All of that comes back to the soul. So we're going to talk about how we can grow, how we can prosper how we can be strong in that soul realm. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23, I pray your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus. You you need to be healthy in your spirit, connect with God, soul, mind, emotions, will, and body. Well, you say, I don't care about my body. I'm a spiritual person. Yeah, but if you're sick in bed, you're not out witnessing. You're not in church serving. You're not helping us on, on light tonight because you can't get out of bed. So don't tell me you're all spiritual. Spirit, soul, and body are important 
in the life that God's called us to, right? Amen. So let's talk about this soul. Here's a, here's a healthy soul. Here's, here's a strong soul. Your mind is on the Word of God. Your emotions are following your thoughts or your mind. And your will is aligned with God's will. This is the goal. This is where we want to get to. This is what John called a prosperous soul. Third John verse 2. You prosper and live in health even as your soul prospers. Well, I just don't understand why I can't get that raise. Why can't I get that new job? Why can't I get that next position? Why can't I make more money? You will prosper, King James actually said, in all things, and be in health even as your soul prospers. Well, I just don't see why I can't find me a husband. I I mean, I'm available, and I know I'm cute. So where's where's all the good men? You will prosper and prosper in all things and live in health even as your soul prospers. I don't understand why I'm always battling with pains and this problem, that was a sickness, and I get through COVID, and then I got this, and then I got that. I don't get it. Why me? You will prosper and live in health, even as your soul prospers. It's a, it's a thing that God set up. It comes out. Success comes out. Of, it doesn't come on you comes out of you. I know we sing, Holy Spirit, fall on me, but you get filled with the Spirit, and it flows out of you in rivers of living water. So if you're waiting for something to happen to you, you may have already got it when you were born again, filled with the Spirit, praying with the Spirit. Now, as you get it in your heart, it starts flowing out. All of a sudden, that new job opportunity that new relationship, changes in your circumstances, health. You start feeling stronger, feeling healthier. You prosper and live in health as your soul prospers. So this is why it's so important. In Isaiah 55, God says in verse 2, we spend money for what is not bread and wages for what does not satisfy. So this is our culture today, right? We're, we're, we're on Amazon, we're on our phones, we're running around, and yet we don't feel satisfied. We have more stuff than we know what to do with, right? And we're all there. We all deal with the same issues. Wendy's buying stuff for the grandkids, and, 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 and Mama, the, our daughter, says, just keep it at your house. I don't have room at my house. But you can have all that stuff and still feel like something's missing. Still be struggling in your marriage, struggling with your health, not where you want to be financially. So God says, why are you focused on the things that don't satisfy? Listen carefully to me. Eat what is good. Let your soul, there it is in the Bible, let your soul delight. In abundance. When you get abundance in your soul, you won't be chasing stuff to feel good. You'll have everything you want. But your strength, your fulfillment, your your joy comes from something else. Right? Have you ever looked at that thing and you felt like if I had that, I'd be so happy? If I had those shoes, I'd, I'd, I'd be so happy. If I had that car, I mean, I'd be rolling. I'd be so happy. And then you got it. It was good for a moment. Then you had to wash it, and you're like, just like the other one. (laughs) You need something new in your, you need some soul food that doesn't come on a bone. Some, Some soul food that feeds your soul 
in a new way, right? So he says, incline your ear, come to me, and your soul shall live. What do you think Jesus meant when he said, you gain the whole world and lose your soul? Now, you cannot literally lose it in like, where did it go? But you lose control because you keep trying to get something. You try to buy something. You, you try to drink something. You try to take a pill. You, you try to smoke something. You're always looking for something. I just want to feel better. Do, okay, let me ask you a question. Do you want to feel better or do you want to be better? That's the challenge. Because if you just want to feel better, you're never going to get it. It's never going to be enough. You, it's ne- you can't buy enough. You can't smoke enough. You can't drink enough. You, you can't have enough sex. You can't do enough crazy stuff. It's never going to happen. Some of you looking at me like, yep, I tried it. <laughs> right? I remember as a young person before I was saved, I, so I wasn't sure what to do. I didn't know where to go. I was, I was so, so scared of the future. I saw my parents divorced. I saw most people around me not happy. We weren't Christians. I wasn't in church. So I was afraid, and I didn't know what to do. And so the Bible says where there is no vision, people smoke a lot of pot. Am I right? Or they drink a lot of beer. Or they're doing crack. Okay, I was was the drug addict. I got put into the rehab center. So I'm not condemning. I'm not throwing rocks. Nor making light. But you're not using drugs or drinking because you like the taste. Or because you just enjoy the company. No, you're trying to medicate the pain in your soul. We all did, and we still are. We can get proper rather than drink it out of the bottle, put it in a fine crystal glass. You got the same issue. You're trying to medicate your soul. You're trying to find some something that makes you feel better. And eventually, the addiction and the habit, and, and it never works, it starts overwhelming you, and that's a lot of our mental health problems in America, isn't it? So we've got we've to stop going for the things that don't satisfy and find what makes our soul live. Now look at this next passage, passage here in Isaiah 55. At verse 7, it says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord, and he'll have mercy, and and to God he'll abundantly pardon. It's it's never God holding back. It's us not going to God. My thoughts are not your thoughts, says the Lord, nor are your ways my ways. As heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Okay, you want a higher job or salary. You you, you want a higher satisfaction in your marriage. You want a higher fulfillment in your life. You're going to have to get higher thoughts before you get a higher way. Right? There's where your soul, it, it starts being renewed. When you're transformed by the renewing of your mind, that soul, that healthy, prosperous soul just starts taking your life up. It's a gift from God. It's a, it's a miracle thing that God does for all humanity. You prosper when your soul prospers. But notice when he said you have to forsake some thoughts. You can't act like you know everything. You got to be ready to say, okay, I'm, I'm going to learn. I'm going to renew my mind. I'm, I, I'm, because I, 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 I was in rehab, and the spiritual leader of the program, who became my my spiritual father, he was teaching me, and I would say, oh yeah, I know, I know, oh I know, oh I know, and he stopped me one day. He said, if you know everything, what are you doing in rehab? 
But we all do that, don't we? We act like we know. Right? We're, we've been through divorce, but we're counseling people on marriage. We're financially struggling, but we're telling people what to do with their money. And when the pastor teaches on finance, we're like, oh, yeah, I know, I know. Actually, you broke, bro. You don't know anything. You don't know. Because if you knew, you wouldn't be broke. Right? But when you think you know, it gives you the right to resist the thoughts of God. Right? When you think you know, it gives you the right to ignore renewing your mind and prospering in your soul. So, so you got to get some new thoughts if you want some new ways. Let's talk about emotions for a moment. Here's a good scripture for you. Ephesians 4, verse 26. Be angry, but don't sin. So emotions, we celebrate them. Uh, emotions motivate us, inspire us. Uh, you're watching the movie that you cry. You, you deal with your wife, your family. You, you feel the pain. Emotions are great, but emotions were never designed to guide you. We don't do anything, or we shouldn't do anything, just because of our emotions. Okay, Wendy and I have been married 43 years, 44. Five years. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. We've been pastoring the church 43 years. We've been married 45 years. We've been together 47 years. Okay, now, in all those years, I've had a lot of emotions. Okay, when we were in Bible school, we met, we were in Bible school. And right away, we, got, we realized, oh, man, well, this, is, this is the one, and we were feeling it. And when he looks at me, she says, you know, I want to be with you. you. You have to tell me we're not going to have sex. And I'm like, like, it's all on me? <laughs> well, you see, what will we say? She says, I feel like you're the one. And, and so that kind of opened up her heart. And I'm like, well, I, I, I'm feeling it. I feel it. But we were Christians. We were committed to be ministers. That means we're going to be holy. So that means what we feel is irrelevant. Here's where some of you miss it. You think you're supposed to do what you feel. But how can it be wrong when it feels so right? Yeah, well, look at your life. That'll tell you. Okay, so a lot of emotions in marriage, right? A lot of emotions. So we're getting ready for the wedding. We're moving into our apartment, and, 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 and it, you know, the stress is on the, the dress, the tuxedo, the, it was all that stuff. And nowadays, we're spending thousands and thousands on a wedding. Wendy and I spent $500 on our wedding. I mean, it was before we had electricity, so things were cheaper, but... Okay, so we're trying to move into the apartment. We're getting food, and, 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 and I think I was going to live there until the wedding, and then Wendy was going to move in. And I'm bringing, and I'm stressed out, and I'm uptight. Well, what does that mean? I don't want to get married? Something's wrong? Maybe it's not God's will because I'm nervous? Hey, everybody's nervous when you get married or making life decisions, life changes. So I'm carrying these groceries up, and our apartment was this little old apartment, three stairs, no, no elevator, three flights of stairs. And I dropped a bag of Cheetos out of the grocery bags. And I was just, ner- I was, and I just kicked them. <laughs> and that bag of Cheetos burst. <laughs> Cheetos everywhere. I'm like, great, just great. Never follow your emotions because you're just going to make a bigger mess. So I walk up the stairs, put the groceries down, get the broom, get the thing, go back downstairs, sweep up the Cheetos. 
Two weeks later, we had just gotten married. We were back. Our honeymoon wasn't any big deal. Didn't have any money. The neighbor meets me in the hallway. Hey, I notice you uh, like Cheetos. <laughs> what? He said, that was a beautiful kick. <laughs> on that bag of Cheetos. He said, my wife and I are still laughing. <laughs> Somebody going to see when those emotions take over. And it, it, might, it might be more than just a laugh. It can be tragic. After 43 years of marriage, you know, there's days when I don't always feel the love. 45, whatever it is. <laughs> I'm trying to preach up here, you know. <laughs> don't worry about the details. I'm a big picture guy. But 45 years of marriage, there's, there's days when I don't feel the love, right? I think I'm, I'm Tom Cruise in Top Gun. I've lost that loving feeling. Now it's gone, gone, gone. Whoa. People live that way. People, they sing that song. They think it's real. Oh, yeah, that's, oh, man, that is, that's the way I live. Well, that's why you've been divorced four times. That's why you keep going job to job and never get ahead. That's why you've been in however many different churches and never became a part of the church family because you keep following this feeling that's not real. It's an emotion. It's, it's volatile. It's, it's a moment. Even God has moments emotional. Remember, he's mad at Israel. He said, I'll... I'll start over with you, Moses. Moses says, no, Lord, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. They're going to they're gonna talk bad about you, Lord. So God says, okay, I'm not going to kill. Well, the next day, Moses is mad at him. Kill them all, Lord. Kill them all. And Moses and the Lord said, no, no, we're going we're gonna to make it. We're going to be all right. Aren't you glad Moses and God didn't have a bad day on the same day? Emotions. You go through emotions with your kids, right? You love that child. You birth that child. You do anything for that child. And then there's that one day when it's his child. <laughs> Come in here and talk to your child. I'm about to kill this child. Emotions. Does it mean you're a bad mom? Nope. This means you're a human. Bad dad? No, just a human. You can't follow your emotions. Feel it. Celebrate it when it's good. Be aware of it when it's bad. Do not follow it. What do you do with your kids when they say, you tell your children, you're going to do the homework, and then you're going to clean your room. I don't feel like it. What do you say? I don't care how you feel. <laughs> you're going to do your homework, and then you're going to clean your room. How you feel is irrelevant. What should pastor say when you say, I don't feel like tithing? I don't feel like serving. I don't feel like I feel like I'm part of the church family. I come like every six weeks. I don't feel I need it every week. We don't care how you feel. Okay, we do, but you get the point. Right? The Bible said, don't forsake your assembly. Keep, keep your mind on the thoughts of God. Don't follow your emotions. The Bible said, bring your tithe into the storehouse. By the way, the Bible did not say give your tithe to your grandkids. Bring your tithe into the storehouse. Keep your mind on the thoughts of God and cause your emotions to follow that. And then you won't just feel better, you will be better. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap right there. Okay. Number three, strong will. Prosperous soul is mind stayed on God, emotions following your mind, your will committed to God's will. 
Human willpower is awesome. It's amazing. The human will is a tremendous gift that will cause you to be blessed or cause you to be cursed. So what you do with your will will decide your future. If you will call on the name of the Lord, you will be saved. If you won't, you won't be saved. Your will is what connects you to God. You want God's will, so you use your will to get it, right? So your will, and remember this, everybody has a strong will, but some of us have let them atrophy. So you still have the muscle, but right now it's weak. So when you say, I'm going to read my Bible every day, it only lasts about three days. And then you forget, and then you say, it's not doing any good, and I don't even know why I do that, because I don't even understand it. And so your will is not strong enough to take you to the finished course or the finished goal. So you have to build up your will. Maybe I can't read the Bible in one year, but I could read a verse a day. Maybe I can't pray for an hour a day. I have a friend who prays for four hours every day. I'm like, bro, I got prayer fatigue. Okay, but I could pray for a few minutes, and I'm going to use my will, and I'm going to practice and develop my will power to obey God's will. And I look at it like this. You're really good at following the will of the devil. All right? The devil wants you to eat food that's not healthy. You're good at following that. You're good at following his will in relationships that may not be godly, may not be holy, in habits that may not be good and may become addictions. So you're using your will, but you need to shift and start using your will for God's will, and that's going to take some new muscle memory. Right? You have no problem remembering to drink when you drink. You don't say, man, I was going to get a case of beer and I forgot. No. But you forget godly things because you haven't developed your will. So you have to practice new choices. Here's your scripture, Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. I call heaven and earth as a witness... I said before you, life and death, blessing and cursing, choose. Everything's a choice, guys. Healthy life, sickness and disease. It's a choice. I'm not saying everybody has chosen sickness, whoever got sick, but in the midst of it, you have to choose life. Right? Sometimes there's an accident. We choose to overcome. We're not going to be victims. We choose to live and not die. We're not going to be poor. We choose to prosper, all right? It won't change overnight, but as your soul prospers, because your will is strong, you will prosper. New opportunities, new jobs, open doors. It's amazing how God will make it happen. But if you don't get it on the inside, you're never going to see it on the outside, right? So mind, emotions, will. I want to give you one last thought. One of our biggest challenges is being schizophrenic. We hear a lot about mental health, right? A lot of mental health issues and a lot of struggles in the mental health area. Very real. We get it. We, 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 we realize. But that affects your spiritual life because to be schizophrenic is to be unclear of your identity, unclear of who or what you are. And what the Bible calls that is double-minded, so today I love the Lord, but tomorrow, I mean, what good has it done? Today I, I want to give and I want to serve, but tomorrow, you know, I haven't seen any results. So you're double-minded. You're schizophrenic. And in our gender world, right, the gender issues, it's the same thing. One day I feel like a man. One day I feel like a girl. One day I feel like both. But remember, we're not following our feelings. Our mind is stayed on thee. Isaiah 
26 and verse 3. I will keep you in perfect peace when your mind is stayed on me. So get focused. Next service, I'm going to get to a little bit more, a few more scriptures on how to get your mind focused and stay in the will of God. Let's close our eyes together. I want to pray for you as we go today. Gainesville family, online family, Orlando family, we all have the same first step, and that is to be born again, to connect with God through our Savior, Jesus, to make Him Lord of our lives and be born of the Spirit. If you've never taken that step, we want to pray with you before we go. If, if you've prayed before but got distracted, got off course, aren't sure where you are with God, we're going to pray with you right now before we leave today. This is not something our church does because, you know, we, we, we think it's cool. Jesus said, you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. So we're going to pray with you. We're going to add our faith to yours. And you're going to take that step with the Lord. It's the beginning of everything he has for you. Now I need you to let me know you're ready for this prayer. If you want to pray with us, if you want to be born again, if you want to know you're right with God, take a little step of faith and Lift up your hand right now. I'm not going to call you out. won't put you on the spot. I just need you to reach out and take a little step of faith. You want to get in on this prayer. You say, Pastor, I'm ready. I'm going to pray. I'm going to take a step with God. Lift it up. Let me see. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Come on, who else? Where are you? I need this prayer. 15, 16, 17. Anybody else? We're going to pray. Gainesville, you lifted it up. We're going to pray with you too. Online friends, we want you in on this as well. All right, put your hands down. We're going to pray together. And no one prays alone, right? And when we pray, we say. Jesus said, when you pray, say. So church family, will you say it with them? Those that lifted their hands, say it out loud. And church family, we're going to be their prayer team. Here we go. Today, Father, I believe Jesus is Lord. I believe he died for me and rose from the dead. Lord Jesus, I turn away from the world and I turn towards you. I'm following you every day the rest of my life you are lord you are savior i'm a christian i'm born again thank you amen come on give him a hand clap hey thank you so much for tuning in to a live online today i pray that message was a blessing to you i pray that the holy spirit just takes something from it and he illuminates it to where your life will never be the same again if that's the case make sure you let us know how your life was impacted and changed because of the message on today we would love for you to share this content you know we have a saying in a live church that one invite can change a life we also believe that one share can change a life. I mean, get your share on. God will use your share as a lifeline to reach people around the world. All right. If you like what we're doing here, we would love for you to be a part of our online family. You can do that by hitting subscribe. We want you to be the first to grab hold of all new messages and all new content as they are released. You know, the Bible says that when we give, it'll be given back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. And one of the greatest ways that you can make a difference and change lives is by giving. And so if you would like to sow to the ministry of Alive Church, hit the button below. And I know that God will bless you and you'll also be a blessing to other people. We love you and we'll see you real soon. God bless you.